Heads up, radio lovers, and you know I love you. So let's open our hearts together and celebrate the patron saint of love. And here's my Valentine to you, sealed with a kiss. Ah, Valentine's Day, a time to celebrate love, that ever-popular romantic kind of love, the kind that you fall into and then breaks your heart, and that you spoon, moon, croon, looty tunes and go to ruin and sigh and cry and want to die for, which all sounds kind of painful, but it's a great ride, and there are few among us who will refuse it, and furthermore, it seems to be necessary for the survival of the species. Yes, And all you romantics out there should be aware that, according to the latest scientific research, our attraction for one another is not really a matter of choice, but arises out of a deep biochemical programming. It turns out that the feeling we call love is first triggered when we smell each other, a process well known to the canines among us. Furthermore, this feeling of love becomes serious only after your selfish genes decide that they have found a good vehicle to ride them into the future a suitable body for their continued replication. So basically, when we are moved to say, I love you, it's really our DNA talking, saying, I love me. Would you like to dance? And the reason that the kissing and the sex feel so good is because nature wants us to be obsessed with mixing our DNA together on the chance that some variations will appear and some life forms will survive all the changes that nature has in store for us. It's called natural selection. And I have great hopes that my DNA will make the cut. But there are other kinds of love that we don't talk about on Valentine's Day, such as the big love, the love that reaches out to everybody. It's the Jesus and Buddha and Gandhi and Dalai Lama kind of love. It's the love inside the Hindu greeting, Namaste, which means I honor the divine within you, that essential light that shines through all of our quirky personalities and joins us together in this common incarnation. And even though this can be a difficult kind of love to feel, it can be practiced. There are meditation techniques and prayers that can teach us how to pump up and radiate our love vibes, allowing us to play in the Olympics of love. So try it with me now, I dare you. Practice loving everybody. How about conjuring up an image of Syrian President Assad or Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and, and send them some love. Remember, they presumably did have mothers. Maybe it would help if you imagine Mitch reading to his grandchildren or cuddling up to his wife in bed, because just maybe, if we all send him some love, he'll feel it, and then he'll stop being such a nasty, mean-spirited, selfish, horrible, fascistic, creepy. Whoa, okay, I'm still working on it, Mitch. But I'm sorry, Donald, you don't stand a chance. But there's still another kind of love, the oceanic love that includes all of creation in its heart. As the poet D.H. Lawrence wrote, what a catastrophe, what a maiming of love when it became merely between persons and was taken away from the rising and setting of the sun. This oceanic love was also well expressed by the great Chilean poet Pablo Neruda when he wrote an ode to his socks. This is the kind of love that pays attention to the earth and the seasons and embraces all of life and even death. This is the mystic's love for creation, just the way it is, perfect in its imperfection. And that's the kind of love to go for, friends. And if we would all practice that kind of love, it would mark a revolution of the human spirit and would change the world forever. And this is Scoop sending off this Valentine to all my lovers out there, reminding you to stay high but keep your priorities straight. And if you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own.